thank you everybody keeping me in order here and i'm going to check and make sure there's nobody waiting there's not i think it'll blink or the light will blink or something like that that would make sense that it would yeah okay thank you kathleen you could we you oh i can't hear you yeah 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 because y'all are all muted that's the reason I, uh, uh, I, I should have unmuted it when I asked the question. Hey, Fred, can you hear me? <clears throat> so uh, you're muted and um, as always uh, you are. Which do other people you can hear me? unmute yourself one at a time. I think Fred is not and hearing us. Marsha, you are Yeah, muted. I hear you, Kathleen. Well, you're not muted. Oh, wait a minute. Let me let me unmute everybody for a minute unless, so we can talk. So I'm going to unmute everybody but well, Will Fuller. Let me admit, admit him. I'm going to unmute everybody. So it, um, yeah, it's not giving me the option. Oh, I see. Wait a minute. Maybe it will. Here we go. Okay. Now say something, somebody, Kathleen. Nobody, you can't. Hello. Hi, Fred. I don't think you can oh. hear us. Now say something again. Hi, Fred. Can you hear us? Hi. Okay. I got it. We're, we're hooked up now. My volume was down all the way. Sometimes it's it, not done. Oh, wow. So put it on a lower temperature because they'll burn the bun. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to go take it back to you. <laughs> burn the buns. <laughs> That's right. We don't want to, we don't want to burn any buns here. The, uh, so, um, so it right might make a, uh, sense Betsy will get on this, but it still might make sense now if you showed up just a few minutes early so that we could get as much of this get in the room thing done as possible. And we'll just have to go through this together and find out what it's like. So uh, let me get a drink of tea and I'll go around and say hello. <clears throat> So it's a whole new world, and even even now Zoom is changing on me. <laughs> the next thing I know, I'm going to look over there, and Betsy's going to have a different hair color or something. <laughs> there's nothing there's nothing really left to surprise me very much, I don't think. <laughs> so, Lior, hello, how are you, sir? Very good to see you. Very good to see you. And uh, Doug Mitchell, hey, pal. Welcome. Hey. Good hey, to see welcome. You, Fred. It's Thank good you. To and Tom Smith, my friend, how are you? Great. Good to see you. And Jason, a pleasure to have you back. And there's my friend Ron, uh, hiding off his iPad, which I understand. That's perfectly, that's perfectly fine. And uh, Wesley, hey, pal, how are you? Good to see you. And, uh, and Lloyd, hello. Good to see you, sir. Kyle, it's good to have you with us. Yeah, thanks for being here. Barbara Smith, how are you, dear? Good, good, good. So, um, oh, wait a minute, I got some four people in the waiting room. And admit all, okay, there we go. And make sure that everybody's in here, meaning. Jill Kelly. Hey, Jill. Mike, you're, um, uh, so I don't have video. Jill Kelly, I, I had, it looks like we're connecting to audio. So we're connected by audio, um, but you don't have video. You may not be on a camera. I don't know. So if you are, you can look over to the left and you'll see a camera icon. Uh, if you look at the bottom left of the Zoom screen, you will see an icon. And it, uh, like if you look over there, you'll see a microphone and you'll see a, 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 a icon and you'll see a, uh, if you have a, if you have vid, uh, audio, you'll see also a stop video thing if you have video. And, and it'll have a line, it will have a line through it. You want to undo the red line, just click the red line off. There we go. And, uh, but if you are on the phone, that's perfectly fine as well. All right, so let's see. Make, make sure we're cleared to go here. 
Okay, we got a real nice group to start out with. That's excellent. I love that. <coughs> I won't. I won't be lonely at all today. And uh, so let let me let me go around now and let's let's go to our. Um, did I finish saying hello? No. Okay. I don't know who in the hell I stopped at. So let me let me go back way back up here. And uh, boy, I went stopped way back. Barbara, I think you might have been the last person. So hello to Robin and Susie. And Neil, good to see you, sir. And Barbara and Roman, a pleasure. And Harvey Jackson, hey pal, welcome back to planet Earth. It's really good to see you. The, and <clears throat> Harvey is an old friend of mine. He's a philosophy teacher. And he in, uh, is it Pennsylvania? And the, say that now? Uh, I'm in Maryland. In Maryland, okay. I knew, it was, I, I was in the right <laughs> general region. The, uh, yeah, mid-Atlantic states. And uh, Jonathan Powers, hello there, sir. And Gary Bridgman, welcome. It's nice to meet you, sir. It's very good. And uh, Kathleen, good to see you, love. And uh, Marsha Madigan, always a pleasure, dear. And Andrea, hello there. Welcome. The, uh, so Andrea is in Italy, so this is sort of the pot calling the, the hot pot calling the hot kettle. <laughs> so Kim, hey, how are you, dear? And Joyce, I didn't say hello to Joyce, did I? I'm sorry, I skipped right over Joyce. Hello, darling. And hello, Kim. And hello, Cliff, it's good to have you back with us. Jane, a pleasure, dear. And Philip Holness, how are you? Excellent, excellent. You know, it just seems like you're fine every time I check with you. <laughs> so, uh, Barbara St. James, welcome, dear. So good to see you. And uh, B9, so good to have you back. And um, Julie, hey dear, nice to see you. And there's Mike Libby, how you doing pal? Great to see you. And Will Fuller, you'd already got his hand up. Is that intentional? You're waiting to go, you're raring to go? Good for you, I love that. So, and John Wearswell, how are you pal? Good to see you. And Priya and they should have gotten links today. Did, did they, Priya and yes. Sanch? Okay, they got links. They're just not here. Okay. Uh, so Huxley, hey, pal. Good to see you. And we've been rocking and rolling lately. And uh, Jill Kelly, a pleasure. And that second Fred Davis down there, that's actually Betsy, and I can welcome her. She's right over here. <laughs> She's in the background keeping things running for us. And Christine Corlett is in the waiting room. We'll let her in. Hey, Christine. The uh, Christine Corlett is in the room, but I don't see you. Wave your hand. Oh, there's, oh, there you are. We don't, I don't have video. For, oh, there's Betsy. <laughs> I've got video from her now. She's waving to everybody. And say, say something, Betsy. Wait, let me, oh, and you'll, and it'll, then the camera will, uh, will go to you. Hello. Oh. <laughs> okay, that's, 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 that's probably all you guys say. Reverb. <laughs> I, I sort of forgot about that technicality. Thank you, dear. Yeah, go back to being Fred, please. That'll be wonderful. So you make a better Fred than I do. I can guarantee you that. So let me make sure that I've gotten pretty much, go back to gallery view for a minute. And hey, Christine and Jill. No, there's it'll, it'll alert me when there is. Okay. Thing is, a little light comes on. So if you come late, uh, you ended up in a in a waiting room before you got into this room, and that's because Zoom had a big crash or a big hacking thing this week, and people could get a crash into rooms and 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 say ugly things and so now I have to physically admit people from the waiting room to here Marcia and says we can change that in our settings. Oh we can change that in our settings. We'll do that after. Well 
Um, uh, yeah, well, I'll, I'll look at, thank you very much, Mar Marsha. I'll look at that uh, after this is over, because I don't, I don't, I don't want to go to it now. I'm, I'm sure to, to uh, cancel the meeting <laughs> or do something else really, really clever. Okay, let me have a sip of water here. Hey, Tom. So, let's do our two-minute meditation. For you new folks, what we're doing is we're doing the sense of being meditation for two minutes or roughly, and what that means is that we're just, I close my eyes, you can or you don't have to. I think it's easier if you close your eyes. Just close your eyes. Notice that there is a sense of aliveness. Always been there, can't not be there. That sense of aliveness is what I call the sense of being. And what these supposedly 35 different people are doing is we're actually focusing on the commonality that is all of us. Okay, I think that's about right. And uh, there's Priya now, let her in the room. And welcome Priya. I can't see you yet, dear, but I know you're in the room somewhere. There you are. I see your box. There you go. Hey Priya, good to, good to have you with us. We've had you in the little waiting room. You'll have to ask your dad about it. I'm not explaining it again. And <laughs> <clears throat> this may be a one-time affair. Okay, so I wanna talk to you a minute before we go to will, and, uh, and it may be just a few minutes actually. And what I want to talk about, is guess what, the only thing that anybody's talking about right now. And <clears throat> uh, Lloyd, it's, if you have a if you have a still pick, then that goes up by default. If you've already, if you go to Zoom and you take a picture with your with, with Zoom, a still picture, then that goes up by default. The um, but you'll have to take a picture and have it there. When my that's where you see two Fred Davis faces, if that's the default for this character. <laughs> so the it's a dangerous world right now. And uh, of course, it's uh, as we mentioned before, it's always been a dangerous world. But it's calling us to pay attention to that right now. And what I want you to notice is that it is it is a it is a danger dangerous and could be a worrisome world. But the good for news for you is that you're not in it. <laughs> There is, I promise you, there is no coronavirus in my world. There may end up being some in my house, but that's just a unit observation. So what we want to do, the, this is the way that we end all suffering, including the fear of the virus or the fear of financial dis disarray or whatever, that, everything that comes up with this, fear for others is what I'm 
suggesting is that we go to great lengths to remain alert. Now, alertness is not the same thing as mindfulness. Mindfulness is a, it's a wonderful practice. I highly recommend it. Nobody's going to get up here and say, oh, screw up mindfulness. It, it, it's, but alertness, mindfulness is right, making you aware of what's going on. Yeah. And, uh, and who, who, who is noticing it, but, but that who is noticing it come may may or not may or may not come into play. So mindfulness is paying attention to I'm I'm pouring a cup of coffee. I notice that the it, it's um, and and all that. But alertness is all about it is all about what notice noticing what's not here. So it's a little different. And what's not here is you. You're here through these 35 beings. The same one you is operating through all 35 of us. There's one alertness. And it's a whiteness's alertness. And you can encourage or impede it. But that's only going to be from a relative level. You can't actually stop it. It's, it. it's all up to fate and all that. But I'm using relative language because we're, we're teaching. This class is about learning how to live in a relative world as a whiteness. That's, what, that's really what this, this satsang is about. And we've, we found out how to live in, I mean, I found out how to live as a Fred in the world for over 50 years. And I noticed that sometimes there are those same Fred tendencies that pop up. There's still conditioning that happens here. But it's Fred conditioning. It's not a Fred. Part of being alert is claiming your awakening. And I got some email on that video this week. I have a video called Claim Your Awakening. You can just go to YouTube and search Fred Davis claim your awakening or go to Google or whatever, and it'll pull it right up. And that's worth your while. If you, if you're all not already familiar with it, and it's probably not going to hurt you if you are already familiar with it. This claiming our own awakening means not denying our own awakening. And when I come to you and I tell you, well, 15 years ago, I had an awakening. I'm in denial of the fact that I am awakeness right now. What I'm telling you is that I think I'm this unit, and I think this unit experienced a big spiritual experience 15 years ago. Feels, looks like it, feels like it, and, 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 uh, and what I can tell you is that Fred had it, and then Fred lost it, and Fred is desperate to get it back. None, none of that is true. Awakening never happens to the character. It always, it, it's just, a, it's a, it, awakening never happens. It's just a, you know, it's just a term that we use when awakeness becomes alert to itself. That's it. So that's what we're, we're talking about, alertness becoming aware of itself. And right now, that's why we all came to this room because there's no, there's really just one of us in the room, 35 cookie cutters, but only one of us. And awakeness has come into this room to know itself objectively. But the problem is, is that, and it's not a mistake, it's not an error, it's the way things work. But oftentimes, awakeness can well, I should oftentimes, almost always, virtually always, awakeness will come to identify with the character, with the, with the body through which it is pouring. And the body, in turn, will connect to the personality that, is, that the body exudes because of, different, because of conditioning. 
what's really happening here, you're watching this move it, this unit move its hands because it can't not move its hands because that's already in there. And we're, we are programmed to believe that we have free will. So there's no reason to fight that. As long as it feels like that there's somebody over there that can make a choice, and I confess there is still a smattering of that here, then what we wanna to do to stay sane is you act like you have free will and you recognize that you do not. Because you recognize that you're not there. There's no one there to have free will. This is really, we, this, is, this is 35, we, we could cut out all the lights here and it would be fine. It'd just be, and you, the same thing would be here. There's void, there's expression, and there's no difference between the two. It's two sides of the same coin with no coin in between. So what I'm advising you to do is if you stay alert to what it is that's, I'm gonna use the word watching because that's what it's gonna feel like. It's not technically a thousand percent correct, but it'll work for today. Is recognize that this is just happening and you are just watching. And if you were watching a television show and that guy's fixing to walk into a room where you know the gunman is and you're, oh my God, don't go in there. <clears throat> and he goes in there anyway. That's the same thing that happens here, right? I, I see Fred start to do something unskillful and it's like, oh my God. And then it, and then it comes up. Well, are you actually surprised? I mean, <laughs> you're surprised at the Fred unit would do something like that. Hell, that's, that's, that's red unit all over. That's conditioning all over. So there's no reason to be surprised and there's no reason to be judgmental. Be easy on yourself. Be easy on yourself all the time, but particularly right now, because there's a lot coming at you. And there's a, and, and I, I can say that, I mean, I think there, for some of you, there may be more happening here than it is there because I'm, with emails and clients and this and that and the other. But that's really just a turn of phrase because there's no all here. There's no you experiencing more than this. I'm experiencing myself through every single one of these little squares. And you are also experiencing yourself through every single one of these little squares because there's you and only you, so you'd have a difficulty experiencing anything else. If you are awake to who it is, if you're just awake to the watcher, even to that level, just notice that, because that's the level, that's the only level you need to go to in order to reduce suffering. It may not, it won't eliminate pain, but it will reduce suffering. And that is to recognize, and the thing is, is that we think we have this thing in our heads. Like, oh yeah, I know what he's talking about. But, but what I'm talking about is not a concept. What I'm talking about is you. And recognize that this is the present experience of you. Let me let Mike in here. So this is the present experience of you. And Mike, I'm gonna go ahead and give you the, the um, gonna let, allow you to record. Okay, pal. Just found out a new way to do that, which is great. Or might've been there all along, or who knows. You're watching this. You're under no threat whatsoever. That doesn't mean that you can't get coronavirus. It doesn't mean you can't die of coronavirus. Betsy and I are updating our wills right now. 
We recognize that one or both of us could die during this thing. Okay. We need to update the wheels, but we don't need to run for cover. There is no cover. There's just this. And when we have, there's just this. And when we have, if we run for cover, what we're talking about is I'm going into denial. I'm going to deny that I'm the awakeness underneath this cloud. I'm just, and, 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 and I ain't, and that's my story and I'm sticking to it. Are you willing to suffer for that? Yes. Okay. Have at it. <laughs> but if you're not, give up. Give up on, on telling yourself the lie. Because almost, I know, I know almost everybody in this room and I know the stories of some people that I don't know well. And I know that al almost everybody in this room or possibly everybody in this room has had an awakening. And that awakening experience, it may have been the grandest thing ever, or it may have been a major disappointment for you. It doesn't matter. It's not about that experience. It's not about recreating that experience. When you're, when you are thinking, I really want to have an awakening because I really want to have that experience. The only thing that could happen, I'm not saying it will, <laughs> but the only thing that could actually happen is that you go back into the dream. And that's what usually happens is that we speak from the, we, is, is that we speak from a whiteness because that's all there is. And now whiteness is in denial of itself, of its own presence right here, right now. And it's saying, I really want another awakening. Well, it's going to need one because it just went to sleep, believing that it's not awakeness. Stay alert. Stay alert to the awakeness that you are. Don't have this be a concept in the head. You're not awake if you're carrying that concept. Not presently awakeness. You're not conscious awakeness. You're awakeness because, hell, there's not anything other than awakeness. But you're not consciously you're not conscious awakeness and that's what this is all about it's trying to shall we say stabilize we're trying to get awakeness to stabilize in consciousness and it's and and, and god almighty it, it's like being an emt i mean i put the you know i put it i, I put it on oxygen and everything else and it wakes up and then by God, it just, it just I, I turn my head and it slaps the oxygen away and goes back to sleep. And I turn around, I got to turn around and get it some more oxygen. So what I'm saying is why have me give the uh, oxygen when you can do it? And you can do it through inquiry. So there is, um, I was working on this inquiry thing yesterday when I'm working on the book that will come out later this year. And what we want to question is only everything. We just want to question everything. In, but the most important thing that we want to question is who is it that's questioning everything? Go for that. And just about the time you get a, oh, 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 I got it, drop that. Just be left here in total ignorance like me. They, you know, they say that ignorance is bliss. That's sort of true, but it's not really like, it's not bliss like I'm, I'm running through, this is great. It's just, everything's okay. Everything's okay. And that's a wonderful thing because there's no experience that I've got to peek out from. Okay, that's going to do it. Thank you very much for your attention. And uh, where's Will? Will, come on aboard and ask your question. There you are. Uh, yeah. Can you, uh, can you hear me? Yes, I hear you just fine. Thank you. And see you very well. I, uh, I jumped in there because uh, the, uh, the girls were downstairs in the garage, so I thought I would... Uh, 
I would uh, steal the opportunity. Good. They, uh, Excellent. Right, right, right on time. They, they came good. in pre started. So, uh, uh, so it's good. It shouldn't be any, any other way. Uh, That's correct. Other than, than it's not. Uh, yeah, I think you pretty much just said uh, the experience here. I think um, just kind of that uh, com conflict might be the wrong word, but just just uh, there's a sense of a, a, a deepening, a grounding um, uh, whether whether positive or, or negative, both of which are subjective. Um, I went out this morning to the store and, and, and one analogy that came to mind is the last couple of years here in California, we've been having a lot of wildfires yeah. uh, and the idea that wildfires are not meant to be uh, happening um, and that it's part of nature, but what comes out of that is, is, is life, uh, is, uh, is uh, beauty as, as, the, as it clears the uh, the brush for, for, for new uh, beginnings to come through. And I think that seemed uh, as as much as maybe uh, Wilness uh, wishes that that insight was in there and it, it wants to, um, it's got lots of stories that it that it wants to share and talk about and make it all about uh, the unit. And those are just patterns. There's no one there doing that. It's just patterns that are working right. like that due to conditioning. It's just all automated. Right. Yeah, and it the, as things progress uh, here, it's it's the one thing that keeps uh, coming to mind here is in, in one of your books you talk about the character being a knee jerk reaction and and try and go to the doctor and mm -hmm. and try to try to try to not do that. Um, so I think bear, bearing in mind here that that we'll. Uh, and this, the, the, the patterns there are to uh, logistically uh, solve everything here as, as things come up um, or simultaneously watching the, that calm down and, and then return. There's no returning, but <coughs> being more present in that alertness uh, that you're talking about. Um, I think, I think what, what, one thing that, that seems to be remaining is there's a desire to 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 really go deeper in into that um, and to want to spend most of my time if I'm not uh, looking after a screaming three year old and one year old running around the house um, uh, is is still kind of the mental conflict of jumping into into work or still wanting to do things even though the last week i've seen uh this, this is a lie but i was gonna say a decade of work uh disappear uh in, in in front of my eyes and um and knowing that there's a chance i won't be running a full-time practice again until until maybe the end of the year uh that it looks like this end that there, there's still a desire there to the pattern to you know, keep keep going while simultaneously having that sense of being, saying, "This is an opportunity to deepen and and be still and to give wellness a bit of a break for a while." The um, the 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 um, yeah, the, the 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 gap is there. It's it's a decision whether you want to go in it or not. And I know that's not true. Um, while simultaneously there, there's there's responsibilities or yeah anyway I'll let you, you you can see where I'm at so I'll let you yes I can and the as you know the the interesting thing is that um, another way of stating the what you said at first about the, the this about a deepening and a desire to deepen and, and is is that what's actually happening there is that awakeness is telling itself, you know, there's less and less will over here. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's, not, he's not doing a great job either. Yeah, what he's he's doing, doing, no, no, he's doing a great job. It's only Will's opinion that Will is not doing it. Willness is not doing a great job. You're doing a perfect job being a Will. I just noticed that, but I noticed that every time we talk, 
you're always doing a perfect job. So be gentle on yourself because it's, uh, say something, Will, to get the screen back. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm here, yeah. There we go. Thank you. And um, so I know you can't write, wait to get, hardly wait to get rid of more Will. I understand. <laughs> With more Willness, right? I understand that. And I understand your impatience because we are the same thing and I've already gone through it many, many times, including here. But as conscious awakeness, speaking to its twin, <laughs> unconscious, well, you're conscious, but I'm speaking to the part that's, I'm just speaking to something else. I don't I actually don't even know what I'm speaking to. I'm just speaking. I know I'm speaking to myself. Is be patient, be gentle, because any sense that I ought to be clearer than this is resistance to the now. Any sense. I know I should be closer. I should be doing better. No, no, you can't be doing any better than you are. That's just the facts. Just the facts, man. And we're all doing, all of these units are doing the very best that they can because they're all doing the only thing that they can do. And that's true whether they are a participant here or they're serving the poor in the slums of India or they're pulling the trigger on a rifle to shoot someone. All these units are doing the best they can. They're all doing the only thing they can. And we like to think that that's not God shooting God, but it is God shooting God with God. Rifle's God too. It's not a bad part. That's the other part, but it's not the bad part. And it's not, and it's not really either the other part because it's two ends of the same thing. This is relativity. It only works by way of contrast. So for every, every depth that it feels that you go to, there's a height that will eventually show. And when there's a height that, to, that we go through, there's a dip that will eventually show. Nothing stays the same. But we don't know what those are going to look like. We may, may not actually be able to tell the difference between a peak and a trough. <laughs> because I noticed that most troughs in my life have turned out to be actually the peak experiences that I needed in order to end up in this room, in this chair. Be grateful for exactly where you are. Be grateful for exactly who you are. And my God, do indeed be grateful that you are among the very, very tiny percentage of human beings that are coming to be seen through. That you're, it's, you're, you're wearing a lucky unit in that box. <laughs> it's hit the lottery. Now, remember to claim the lottery. Take your ticket in, claim the lottery. Just don't, jumping all around, I won the lottery, I won the lottery. What you'll notice is you're not any richer at all until you turn that ticket in. And I'm telling you, to, you've already woken up. Turn your ticket in. Yeah? Just tell yourself the truth. I, I, well, but, but I don't feel like it. Who is that that doesn't feel like it? Thank you, Will. Anything Thank you, else? Uh, yeah, I think just, just, yeah. Um, I think the, the only thing I was going to say there is that it, that it, it almost feels like a, uh, a fear of letting go of that kind of final thread. Yeah. Um, yeah. And yeah the, it's only, and the, the good news is it's only Will's fear. <laughs> <laughs> um, and you know, when, when everything else in, uh, is in turmoil, uh, what better thing to do than uh, to watch The Matrix, which is what I did last night. Uh, um, yes. I haven't seen for a while. Right. And just just from an objective without uh, Will getting too caught up with it, um, 
but one thing that resonated was that it was kind of right towards the end of the scene uh, when Neo gets shot and he goes down um, and he stands back up and they fire the, the bullets um, at, at him. And the thing that went through my mind is that those bullets of pain are actually thoughts. Mm. Yep. And then as he, as he stood up and he just, and it, you could just see the, it was almost like I could understand his, his face or his expression was just one of complete surrender with simultaneously knowing. And to, just, just to look up with, with, with that face and just to put his hand up and just say no. <laughs> To, to to the bullets, which to me were the the thoughts, which which then reminded me again of your book, where you talk about the woman uh, in the car, where where the the guru says, um, just shut up or, or leave me or, or something along those lines, where it was just kind of a definitive, uh, and it 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 felt, and it, it's obviously it's just a projection, but that 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 desire that's really been here for the last couple of weeks to want to just stand up and just say no. But then, but then I think there's a false desire that it, that it wants that to be it. Well, think to uh, think, yeah, right. And there's no graduation because you got to come, you got to stand up and do that. But 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 you got to do it today, tomorrow, and the next day too. <laughs> yeah, I know. I prefer I prefer the movie version where he gets to just do it once, and, yeah. you know, and then that's it. You know. I and remember it that it's different. it's only will that's in resistance of doing that. Okay. If you're waiting for will to get ready to do that, don't. It'll never happen. Yeah. You have to do it. You have to do it. Don't 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 push everything off on poor old willness. <laughs> right yeah. now it's already programmed yeah, that would be great now it's someone else's problem yeah that's it it's it's it is somebody else's problem or something else whatever it is mm. you know it's, but it's yeah. but it's most certainly not that unit so i can guarantee you and it's not the thoughts that that, that are running through that unit the thoughts that run th through that unit are just as just as real as a will okay yeah. thing Thank you, and thank you to this group. Um, you know, it's going to be uh, it'll be in uh, the beginning of all this. My thought was how is how is the group going to really um, uh, progress through this time? And I, I think round about now we're going to start finding out. Uh, not that we, not that we didn't uh, truly appreciate uh, this group, but I think the coming months is it's really going to uh, shine. Um, it's, it's, it's a bit closer knit. Yeah, because it's mandatory surrender for anybody that's waiting for the thing to help them surrender. This is it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if you ever wanted Willy Wonka's golden ticket, he's he's uh, put it in your hand. You're at the front door. The door is open, uh, and uh, you know we've all got to stand six feet apart, but everyone's in there. Yeah, take take this take this opportunity. <clears throat> use this opportunity use it to go ahead and and do some clearing yeah. go ahead and, and and when i'm talking about do some clearing i'm not talking of course to will or douglas or barbara i'm talking to myself i'm talking to awakeness awakeness this is it this is this this is your opportunity there'll never be probably never be well there'll never be in, on a mass scale probably never be another opportunity like that in like this in our lives i mean this is this is a once in a century opportunity to really tell yourself the truth and then tell you when you do that tell yourself the truth and you feel that relief from recognizing that this is it there's nothing i can do to, because this is it and there's no i here to do anything then just stay open to doing the next thing and to, to doing the same thing when the next arising appears, which means when your children walk in the room or you get up and you walk out of the room and bump, whatever, any, there's actually, it's changing even without that, but the, that would be change we would easily recognize. Thank you, Will. It's great to have you here. You're going to be just fine. You know that, right? Yeah, unfortunately. Yeah.
Yeah. <laughs> it's hard you, but it's, it's almost a sense of guilt, you know, when, when the, the world's falling uh, apart, but you I feel know. a sense of peace. Because I, where, where is my sense of duty as a father and a, and a provider and all of this? Where's my, you know, where's, um, I mean, I can't just shirk my responsibility. Well, you don't have any responsibility to shirk. So it's just happening. So there's no point in beating up one of these characters for not doing what it should be doing because it always is. So uh, Huxley got thrown out of the room somehow, I guess. Huxley, you're back in now. So Wesley, how are you? Hello. Hey, how you doing, man? Looking, looking, looking for uh, a Wesley. Still, uh, still can't find one. Good for you. Um. <laughs> yeah, just lovely to be here. Um, you know, there's no other option. There's only here. Yeah. <laughs> but. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um these the, these really are lucky units it's uh it's, it's these really are lucky units i was thinking about hold on i've got something else in my earpiece okay i was i was thinking uh about uh you had said i think in Maybe last week's satsang, Fred, you had said maybe a few weeks ago that you know there's no there's no uh, there's no homeostasis, there's no standing still. That's right. In everything that's happening, you know, it's either you know, whatever direction the poles are getting amplified, and uh, to be on this side of of, of that. You know, it's just a conceptual map, but using that metaphor to be on this side of it is a real uh, privilege. It's, um, you know, speaking in a, in a relative way, of course, there can't be any other unfolding, but it just seems, you know, if, I, if I'm creating a story, it seems like a real privilege. Um, it, it's, it's, it's almost like, I had this thought, this this metaphor, that all the teachings, you know, if the teachings, the pointings, the unteachings, if they were ever um, active, if they ever, uh, the potency of the teachings was ever in effect, it's now, you know, this is this is really where what's real gets revealed and in my experience it's like baker's yeast in the um, in the dough of, of consciousness and it's just you know it's such a time to be around and i'm hearing how it's activating you know so many other teachings so many other uh, teaching streams within myself in the form of you know fred davis in the form of Muji in the form of, you know, Eckhart Tolle, all this, you know, the teachings have just become even, even more uh, clear. Yeah. And so it's a real, you know, without minimizing or romanticizing, but in a real just deep way, it's like, there's so much, there's so much being, there's so, it, it's such a rich time. There's, there's just so much happening. Um, I like that. So, it is. It is a very rich time. Yeah. So, so it's it's. It, it reminds me a bit what Will uh, was was talking about with uh, the analogy about the the forests burning, um, and it, it it just seems at, at a certain point the sadhana, if 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 there is a sadhana, uh, it would be something like. Um, that that phrase grist for the mill yeah. it's yeah it, in, in, 
months months passed, you know, before this trajectory and this unit's uh, trajectory. Um, it was like the mill had been shut down and just <laughs> um, a lot of the uh, raw material had just been accumulating and piling up. And these past months, the mill has slowly come back into operation, it's cleared out, you know, big chunks, big chunks, and now it's it's in operation. So it's, you know, again, being on this side of things with everything that's going on, it's it's just uh, grist for the mill, I guess, is, is the term that keeps coming to mind. Mm -hmm. um, and being here is, is, is with this group, I just feel gratitude, I feel, you know, love, I feel connection. Um, and uh, it's also become real clear, Fred, the teaching, the pointing that you have about uh, the arrogance of this three pound um, wet, wet wear, I think is the term yeah. I've heard. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe Sam Harris, I think mm -hmm. maybe there's three pounds goo yeah. <laughs> to what's what's going on here is just <laughs> um it's just so beyond comprehension but in a way in a way experiencing that directly the uh, sort of the mystery of, of everything and just the that there's anything here at all just this mystery um also kind of makes it seem like this really exquisite and novel, uh, you know, the fact that we have this, this dualistic experience of objects and, uh, you know, apparent objects and apparent separation uh, as filtered through this, this three pound wet wear is a real novel trick that I've done here. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. My hat's off. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, it also seems like that, and this, hear, hearing this before it's coming out of this unit's mouth, it seems like this is one of the few places I, I, I could, it would even arise to speak something like this, but because it sounds very, I don't know, but I guess narcissistic or solipsistic, I don't know, but it just strikes me how perfectly designed this whole thing is for awakening. Um, just there's been no no inch of of experience wasted. Nothing uh, is wasted. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and and without an understanding that it's not that there's no Wesley here. That sounds really. Uh, yeah, I, I mean, I can imagine that doesn't sound very uh, skillful, but it's just, yeah. Oh, it sounds it's beyond good to me. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that sounds, <laughs> that's fine. We, we don't even know what it is that has discovered that there's no Wesley, but we has, <laughs> and it's not. And in, yes. in sessions, I will often point out to somebody, so do you notice that, I mean, you, that, that, um, that there's something here with me right now. Yes, I said, and, and but we can't find a Wesley, can we? No. So whatever it is that's with me, I'd just like you to notice that you can't even find a Wesley, much less <laughs> declared to be one. Yeah. And that's the truth. Right. It's the, it's just, it's the, the empty vessel, the vessel is still there, but it's empty, it's always been empty but there are illusions of cargo boxes everywhere tied to this butt vessel and little flags running up and all kinds of just distraction. But it's distraction so that we don't notice there's nothing there until we're ready. And when we, once Beautiful. we've seen it, we don't want to, we don't want to deny we've seen it. We go right back into that thing from which we we sought freedom from when you first came here. Let me let me let Wesley. Let me um, read an email that I I got uh, this week and great uh, sure. It I think it's worth 
hearing. <clears throat> and let's see, where is it? Not that one. Okay, here it is. Dear Fred, dear Fred, I have been seeking for more than 30 years. I always thought that awakening was a difficult process and a rare occurrence. A few days ago, I chanced upon and purchased your audible book, Awaken Now. I listened to it twice and began to wake up. I then visited your website and purchased the self-realization video course. I watched it in a single day and woke up. I really appreciated the clarity sessions that are in that course and realized that I will need the ongoing clarifying that you offer through your satsang meetings. Yes. I cannot afford to attend live sessions for as long as I'd like, so I'm going to purchase the recordings of the satsangs in order to get more bang from my buck. If I eventually have a burning question, I will attend a once-off satsang. The work happening through the Fredness is simply miraculous. In gratitude, that, that, that actually is coming from a, um, somebody in the room with us today. That was written by uh, Doug, by Doug Mitchell. And the reason I bring it up is that we forget W w those of us who have woken up and been around this for a while, let me get back to the Zoom room. We, we tend to forget that this ain't what just happens, that, that what's happening here has nothing to do with Fredness, obviously, but what's happening here is miraculous. Yes. So when it occurs, our, our reaction astonishingly is to give back the miraculous holy god i can't believe it but let this is just fabulous let me get it back <laughs> drop it like a hot potato I yeah drop it like a hot potato it reminds me of when is i can't tell you how many alcoholics i've, I've heard dying alcoholics usually that are saying well you know if it gets bad enough i'll go to AI. And, um, well, I mean, you've, you've, you, you know, you've lost your, your, your family and your job and your house and your car. How bad does it mm. have to get? And um, yes. that was, I remember talking to one woman who said that her conditions were degrading faster than she could revamp her expectations. In other words, the oh, uh, right before she could lower them, she could, uh, it was getting worse faster than she could lower her expectations. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> wow. that's, when, that's when she came. So, and, it, and it's not really completely unlike this because um, my father was, got into AA back in the thirties and, um, got sober. And I can remember when I, as a child, he drove all over the state holding these incredible, miraculous meetings where people were getting sober. And uh, he was a very busy man spreading that in this state at that time. And uh, I was a child. And I went with a lot of this. And I also, we used to have like fish fries in our yard and we would see it happening. And what I want to say is that it was incredible. These people really understood it. And at Christmas, it's not, at Christmas, it, there would be lines of people. Now, uh, I, understand, I, did, I did not love my father. I didn't like my father. I didn't love my father, really. I just, I, I didn't like him because he was good everywhere but home. <laughs> Yes. But yeah. I still couldn't help but be amazed that come Christmas, there would be a train of people. And I, I can't tell you, it's funny, I live wow. on Poinsettia Street, because I cannot tell you how many Poinsettias my mother had. Uh -huh. They were all over the house. They were on the porch. They were in the yard. I mean, it was just Poinsettia hell. 
and uh, and other stuff just because they had not forgotten the miracle. Mm. But these days, there you know, there's an AA meeting at every time of day on every corner for every every you know person that wants to be spoken to, you know, for every gender, for every um, gender bias, for every, uh, I mean, I, I, I don't know that there's one in Colombia for Korean transvestites, but it wouldn't surprise me <laughs> if there was. Mm. And it, the problem is, is that the miracle is recognized less and less often because it's become so incredibly available. And we can do that with this. Yeah. We can forget, as we now read Doug's letter, we can forget, I mean, I, I, I was a seeker for 24 years. This, I was this teaching's first student. And I can forget how miraculous that was and how life-changing that was and how incredible that was and think that, you know, well, it's, this is just what happens because it's not what just happens. I uh, wake up people every week and I watch them recognize that a, a miracle has just occurred. I have a short clip of a woman, I don't have her permission to put it on YouTube, but of a, a, of a woman that just woke up this, with me this week and she is just, uh, and she's, she's laughing and crying. She says, I don't know whether to laugh or cry and I, I just suggest she do both. Don't play down the miracle of your awakening. It's, it's not a miracle. It's it's a miracle. Yeah. That's right. It's amazing grace. It is amazing grace, and it's not happening. Yeah. You know, we talk about everybody. Oh, you know, oh, gee, it looks like there's a big awakening and it's all across the world, and it it can seem like that. But actually, the next retreat that you go to, take numbers. Right, write down the numbers of who's who's had who's awake right now, and who's not. Take, right. They, they right. make a list of who's had an awakening and who hasn't. Because, yeah. I mean, I was 10 years into being a seeker before I had a glimpse. And, the, I mean, and, and then it was another 14 before I really got clarity. Because I, I denied my awakening. Now, I was a practicing alcoholic. It's kind of hard not to. But uh, so I give myself that out. Yeah, that's really powerful. All, all of that, that's very just powerful, very touching. Uh, and I just, I just want to say, you know, one of the things that happened after the, this recognition took place is, is I realized all the points throughout my life when the recognition was act, active, there wasn't a context for it, but there was a wakeness that was happening. Uh, you know, at these different points. And I remember once when I was a young boy, and I may have shared this, just being completely awestruck with the miracle that there's anything at all. Yes. And, uh, and that, surf that memory surfaced after whatever, 30 years or something like that. And it's that same just here and now. How, <laughs> how, how, it's beyond how, but, you know, the question, how is, how is, how is this happening? And, uh, and when it's happening, there's the sense, God Almighty, this is so obvious, I could never unsee this. And then yeah. we turn right around and we unsee it, right? I mean, we don't, we can't completely unsee it. Once awakening has happened, it happens. This is awakening off and on like this white switch. But the within this own, there are enormous variations of clarity. And you can you can still you can be awake and there's the sound of snoring from your part of the room still coming in, right? Yeah. Because you can't not be awake, but you've lost the conscious part of it. You've given it back. Don't give back the miracle. It's a lucky unit, as Wesley points out. They're, they're incredibly lucky units. My God, take yeah. the luck. Take the yeah. luck, yeah. damn it. <laughs> right? I, I, yeah. And it's part of the miracle is, you know, it could have been a bag of worms or a bag of rocks yes. at the center at the bottom of surrender, but yes. it happens to be, you know, That's everything it. you've ever looked for. Uh, That's it. So it's, yes. yeah, it's just unending gratitude. 
Um, and I just want to ask, and just a yes or no, if, if, if you feel like it, uh, there, it seems there's always going to be, so long as this body is here, some identification. It seems like there will always be for this to manifest at all, this experience, there has to be some, some identification. Uh, would you agree with that? I, I do, because yeah, mean, okay. think, if you think about it, if we came up behind, if, if Ramana was sitting behind, uh, uh, on a rock and we came up behind him and I said, hey, Ramana, he'd turn around. And he wouldn't turn around because he right. believed that he was exclusively this body. He would turn around because that's what units do in that situation. But there would be, but there is still some core identification in the absence of that very basic core identification, the unit would not be able to survive because there wouldn't be enough identification yeah. to clothe it when it was cold or to feed it today. Uh, you might give it to, you might just spoon it on the table and say, God Almighty, I'm so hungry. Why is this not? <laughs> 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 I'm eating. I'm eating like crazy, and I'm still hungry. <laughs> he, 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 Ramana gave it gave it a good try though in those early years. Yes. Uh, yes. <laughs> he yes. Gave it a good try. He gave it a, yeah, he came about as close as uh, uh, I'd say he came as close as you can get. Yeah. I mean, Great. The, when it, when rats start eating your feet and you don't yeah. know. That's, <laughs> that's, that's exactly. pretty removed. So, but if there hadn't been any identification there, no identification could have returned. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Yeah. So it was dormant, but it was there. And it remained dormant to a, a, an astonishing degree for the rest of his life. The, it did, yeah. Yeah. Thank you very much, Wesley. You as well. Thank you, Fred. Yeah, Thank great you to, to see every, you. To everybody, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Lloyd, hello, my friend. How are you, sir? Hey, Fred. Uh, hello, everybody. Um, so great to be here again. Um, it strikes me, uh, I just read something in uh, Nisargadatta recently about him insisting that uh, the difference between waking state and dream state is non-existent. That this is definitely a dream, and uh, and I think that that makes a huge difference, and it gives us some tools to kind of understand what the hell is happening. Uh, what's the difference between a dream and a nightmare? If a rat is nipping your feet <laughs> that's a, and it yeah. doesn't bother you, that's the dream. That's not the nightmare. Another, isn't that it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a, that 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 is it. So it's just noted. It's just so important that we notice that that this is happening, and I am watching. Every one of you can say that this is happening, and I am watching. Now, we we'll, may have some difficulty locating that eye. <laughs> but, <clears throat> but we'll use it anyway, right? So, when you realize that, because the idea is, like Will was talking about, is that there's this sense of, there's a fear of letting go, but you've, you, you've never picked it up. <laughs> you can't let go of what you don't have. So you're not giving up control. You're giving up the, oh, Amy. Amy, did you, did, Ron, did Amy get in? I didn't realize that she was up there. So if, if she's not, Ron, ask Amy to get back to, oh, there's, no, no. That's Amy Rowe, but I, oh, Amy, you got in. It was Amy. It was Amy Rowe. Isn't that right? That was trying to get in just now. Uh, we'll, we'll assume so. If it was Amy Asa, Ron, please get her to come back. <clears throat> oh, I'm sorry, Lloyd, pardon me. Please go ahead. You were talking about giving up control and you gave up control. 
Yeah, that's it. I mean, I, uh, is that I, we, we all thought that I had some control of this room. <laughs> <laughs> and now we notice I don't, right? It's happening. I'm watching, right? And uh, so, and I can't, I can't get, take back my patrol, my control because I can't, I never had it. <clears throat> I can't give it away because I never had it. What I have to recognize is that this is just happening and I am watching. And I'm not watching from my perch in this world. I am watching from whatever it is that's prior to this world. And this world is drama and it is fascinating. It's very entertaining. Coronavirus has just got me all excited about, <clears throat> the, about this thing. But it is, but I find it to be ex extraordinarily compelling, but not the least bit frightening. And what's a miraculous and super bizarre seemingly, is that when examined, one level is I'm watching and the stuff is just happening, the dream is going on. So I keep rowing the boat you know, gently down the stream because I see I'm watching that it's a dream. But then there's a second level of watching, which is unconscious. Yeah, and right. God knows how one, become, one can be aware of that. But apparently there's, like you say, bleed through that the unknowing is uh, not even watching. Right, it, the unknowing does not, the, the, does not know itself. So it's right. not actually watching, but there's some kind of something happened in that bleed through yeah. that goes against all logic. Yeah. It's, it's logic defying, I don't understand it. Thank God. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> but a miracle of, uh, yeah, I keep using this word, but it's really just normal. But we, we, it, but it, we, it seems miraculous because it, it is inconsistent with the rest of our lives, these things that happen. And so there's this bleed through where a light comes on where there's never been a light before and where there will not be a light when it goes off. Right. Right. There's a, there's a shining, there's something happens and you come to, to recognize, <coughs> Oh, there is something prior to consciousness and I'm it, but it's not, but you don't know what that is. You just know that you, that, you know, just know that it is. We can know about it, but we can't actually know it. We can't, we can't, uh, we can't shake hands with the, with the potential to shake hands. <laughs> right? right? And that makes it all the more miraculous. One, one level of miracle is that, you know, why is there something rather than nothing? Yeah. Then the other level is, uh, there is nothing. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Yeah. So, but there's, but there's this, I like Wesley's words, there is this very, very rich experience. Yeah. If there's this very rich experience, there's a, it, and, and there's a sense of world mm -hmm. and there's, but that sense of world is built upon the sense of being. Mm -hmm. And the sense of being is built upon something which is beyond is or is not. You just, there's no way to touch it. Yeah, that's the puzzling thing that always really bugged me about the uh, Ultimate Medicine book, which with your help, I'm beginning to understand quite a bit more, I think. Uh, he says, you cannot get lasting satisfaction from reading books. Okay, we know that. So you must try to know the seed of this knowingness, its very quality. Only then can you have this eternal peace or lasting satisfaction. But once you understand that, then what happens is, is of no further use because there's no experiencer of all that anymore. 
Correct. That satisfaction or that eternal peace is of no use because there's no experiencer of it. Yeah, that's and when... Logically, that someone went, okay, I'll be killing myself then. But that's not the conclusion, you know? Uh -uh. It's the opposite, actually. Bigger miracle. So there is, what we're taking, saying is that there is waking up to the dream and there's waking up from the dream. Wow, that's pretty great. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Lloyd. Thank you. I always love to have you here. Yeah, so um, we have an open mic. And Robin, hello. Yeah, hi, Fred. Hello, hi. Lloyd. Hey, hey, Susie. Um, thanks for the uh, input, Lloyd. It just gave me, it just nudged me into uh, uh, I, I heard something the other day about um, an in, the intellectual understanding, which we we use we, we we're using this intellectual understanding to get to an under, a, a deeper understanding, which makes the intellectual understanding superfluous. Mm -hmm. I like that very much. Yeah, I like that very much. Uh, I just felt that like sharing it with. Uh, with I've I've read that that page in the book too, too Lloyd with the ultimate medicine. <laughs> yeah try and sleep after that yeah um another thing i want to actually i wanted to share a, a, an experience i had this week which is very much about watching i was uh, fiddling around with an ipad I, I i borrowed an ipad from work i don't have one myself and i was sitting in my in my chair and i was sort of i started comparing the camera picture with what was just behind it so i was sort of going back and forth I, i'm just fiddling around and all of a sudden it dawned on me yeah you know, I'm looking through this camera. <laughs> yeah, that's saying, right. Oh, well, that's that's the iPad's picture, and that's reality. Oh, there is a subtle difference. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's a big difference, actually. Yeah. It's only uh, the, what it's the noticing that, it, that's subtle, but the experiencing it is profound. And it may not, it, it, and it may not be all that profound to begin with, other than there may be some kind of awakening experience. <clears throat> there may not be much of an awakening experience. It does, and then we're jealous. But why are you jealous? Your <clears throat> awakeness has had every awakening that ever was. <laughs> yeah. It can't it's, it's out. You know when you go into a big, uh, a big uh, t uh, television showroom where they've got a whole wall of TVs, uh, with the one with more uh, definition than the other, and they're all they're all completely fantastic colours, and, and it's all like there's wildlife going on here. Somebody's shooting a, a line over here. There's maybe some dancing girls, and, and it, mm -hmm. it's all going on all at once. You know. I pity the people who work in these places. <laughs> but uh, while, I'm, while I'm at it, I do have something to share which surprised me. Uh, we were... I, I, uh, Robin has thought that this, this coronavirus thing, he had it kind of covered, if you know what I mean. It was, yeah. oh, we've got the oneness thing, yeah, it's all oneness. But then the, uh, the, the carpet was pulled out underneath the Robinness world. Yeah because of the changes at work the small it's very small changes but the the change in the structure you know it, it just freaked me and it was i didn't see it coming i didn't see the 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 the, the, the effect on the patterns on, on the robin patterns that it would be so uh, horrifying it was it was like all kinds of uh, uh, patterns of insecurity and what now and what if and it just started, you know, going turmoil like that. How is that working in terms of uh, social distancing? First off, do your the I know that you work with mentally disadvantaged yeah. children. So well, do they live at the, at this place that you? Yeah, the, you yeah, that's that's part of the the problem. They they right. do live there, and uh, when they go home every sec every two weeks, usually they go home every two weeks to visit their their parents or to be with their mother and father. Uh, and uh, then they come back, which is where most of the problem is because if they do go home, so they have most of them haven't been home, or if they did go home, they stayed home, mm -hmm. so they didn't bring the uh, the the the, uh, the virus with them back. Mm -hmm. So we've had very few pupils, and uh, uh, then there were talk about uh, yes, but now they're all coming back, 
and we're going to have to separate them 24 different pupils so they don't have contact with each other and all our all our units wouldn't have contact to each other in the class well mm -hmm. different classes and we'd have to keep this like hermetically and it just was that's what freaked me out but the one thing was that we would have to change our structure the rhythm yeah. <laughs> of everyday life yeah i mean what am i thinking i mean <laughs> Uh, if I was in in Italy or you know, the States or whatever, I mean, I just I, I've got it so good here. I mean, yes, yes. You what know. you're talking about is that you've got a very high quality problem and you're noticing it. Yeah, very very good. That's the way. That's the way. Yeah. It's well. I got my first aid lady over here. Uh, she helped me out with it. <laughs> she can read me like a book, you know. I why are you so pale? <laughs> you know? Not difficult. No, it's not really because difficult. I'm thinking. <laughs> yeah. 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 I'm thinking really hard. <laughs> and I'm believing everything I say. Yeah. <clears throat> Makes me she pale. Did, she, did, she did give me the, uh, the comment, the, the, the uh, applause that it didn't take so long to get, or it, get, it takes shorter and shorter time to get to see through it. Yep. Yep, yep, and that's and that's the, and that's what happens. That's the truth of it. It's not the myth. It doesn't match the myth of awakening. But the myth of awakening is is the seeker's nightmare. Because it's you know, even when there is an awakening, the seeker notices that this, if if it's much of an a, a, much of an experience attached to that, much of a spiritual experience attached to that awakening then that just goes, you know, that comes and goes. And when it goes exactly as it did here, then the belief is the enlightenment went with it because I no longer feel this. I'm just, I am so in love with the candy that I am failing to recognize that it's in a box, right? I'm failing to recognize the box or whatever. I'm so in love with the box. I can't see the candy, however it would work, but that's, that's it. Yeah. Very good. Uh, just to round off, uh, we saw a, a Eckhart Tolle uh, thing on Facebook. Uh, and he, one of the things he says, which is really po poignant, is that the world is not there to make you happy. The world is there to wake you up. Yeah, that's so, it. Yeah, that's it. And, 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 and it's not, and, and a, it's not, Robin's awakening. So Robin Ness believes it should play out a certain way because that's what I've been thinking all my life. And but this, this, I mean, this is not enough. And it's that will always be Robin Ness making that judgment. Yeah. It's we have to remember the real truth, which is that you are awake Ness. You can't overstate that. You can't say it too many, you can't repeat it too many times because it is the fundamental problem in, in, a, in spirituality today mm. is that we're being taught to be awake or, or we're being told we're not awake. Mm. And neither one is true. Mm. Thanks, Ray. Thank you. Thank you very much, Robin. That was great. Susie, good to see you, dear. Open mic. Mike. Hi, Fred and all. Yeah, how are you? Oh, very good. Um, yeah, Wesley inspired me a little bit with this uh, mentioning of the being privileged and, and then your follow through with, but the reaction is to share the privilege, right? And, um, my day started with forgetting to have set the alarm and being, you know, oscillation about like, oh, I'm going to get up now. How am I going to make myself get up? If I don't make myself get up and just like not go, you know, that, that kind of uh, stuff. And added to that was, you know, your, your voice that, you know, there's no being late. This is the perfect time. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> that's kind of the privilege that I wanted that I, you know that I would share with anybody else now right no, yeah right uh, in AA they got you know their discipline about the common reaction would be like to share that oh I'm sorry I was late you know yeah right yeah 
and so how it's backwards here is, is really uh, love the privilege of being able to share that. <laughs> um, love the privilege of being here at all. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, and um, and then and when Lloyd mentioned that the peace and satisfaction that's for no one is then therefore not there's no use for it, right? <laughs> or not for, I, I cannot use it. And and similarly, what you said about the you know the note with Robin and noticing is subtle, but the experience is profound, right? That that oscillation, right? If if it wants to if it wants to be grabbed, is can be an oscillation, and that it reminded me of on Westworld. That there's a character that um, you know last year was human, and then and we don't know that it's a robot at the beginning. And, and then you get, get revealed to him that he's a ro he's become a robot. He's, they programmed the, 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 the life into a robot. And as that, and of course, it's not true. No, what are you talking about? I'm real. <laughs> and and then the evidence is presented in a way. And then and then the 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 the, the actor gets stuck. I not real. I I'm not real. <laughs> So, so that that attempt to grab the not being real yeah. as a, yeah. as a uh, profound yeah. Yeah. the fist the fist can't grab itself, right? Yeah. yeah. So, <laughs> so again, so wanting to share the privilege of not getting stuck in that loop, you know. That uh, see, I can see, uh, or Mike wants to see, <laughs> you know, how it all these things are happening, and make and have it be for something. Right. Yes, right. Right. Sure. What, what's the point? What's the point? Where's the where? Where's the bottom line to this thing? Yeah. You know. And then, like in the context of uh, coronavirus, uh, you know, very privileged life. We're in retirement, literally, as well as <laughs> my privilege of psychological right. retirement. And so we don't have to go out much. Uh, and like I said, I wake up with uh, uh, oversleep, and I'm thinking about that, and not that the world, the world story, right? Yeah. Uh, so there's the rec and I can see Mike that, you know, it's like, oh, he's not you know, warm enough and loving enough. And look, I'm worrying about oversleeping. And, and then I get reminded about the world, right? I'm supposed to be, you know, the privilege is supposed to be for something to really be out there and in, in some particular way. So that's Mike, you know, trying to go, I am. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> <laughs> you know? As opposed to the privilege and, and the gratitude and, and joy of, of yeah, there's just the noticing, you know, and so like my high quality problems are like, you know, what I ended up labeling social anxiety just for conversational use that Mike sees a lot uh, and then more because he's labeled it social anxiety, right? But there's, <laughs> but there's a, that's the skillfulness, right? That it's kind of denied didn't recognize a lot of that and then went drinking, right? And using a lot. <laughs> so, so like an example of how I'm affected by the coronavirus is when I, I'm out in front of the house and a, a woman with a baby stroller goes by, goes by, but she goes out into the middle of the street and goes around me. <laughs> and Mike still reacts with, <laughs> with like, you know, what, what's, what, 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 it's about him. What's wrong with, what's wrong with me? And then wants to, Get mad at her. Okay. I mean, very. I mean, it's very, very not almost not noticed, right? Yeah. But there's a gratitude and privilege at being able to be kind to Mike now as a just another yeah. character, right? At all, you know, he's yeah. reacting with with uh, some kind of uh, resentment or whatever, and and not having to blame the the, the lady in the in the baby with the baby stroller. Um, so yeah, I just, so I just loved your guys' things, you know, your, your, your sharing. So I just wanted to share on. Thank you very much. Thank you. All. Thank you. All. Yeah. yeah. It's great to have you here as always, Mike. And thank you. Uh, listen, I'm going to send you an email today, Mike, which will have, uh, the new CSP members in it to invite to the Facebook, um, your Facebook uh, group, okay? Yeah, I think, and uh, I think it's, I don't know, it's two or three, but it's it's more than one. 
And uh, just to let you know, those of you who are in CSP or T3, either one, you do get your, you get, get to, you know, free sun songs. You can, Christine just switched from Sundays to Wednesdays because they're more convenient for. You can do that if you want to. And the other thing is that it, on any satsang that you miss, um, we are going to send you the link for it. So if you're just coming to Sundays, we're going to send you a link to Wednesday. You watch it or don't watch it, but we want to offer it. Um, you're our folks, and we want to offer you absolutely as much as we can. We have to make a living, but we don't want money to come between us ever. Thanks. Open mic. <clears throat> Hi, Fred. Hi, how are you, Harvey? Good, good. Um, I'm glad to uh, be back after yeah. um, uh, a couple months of just listening to the recordings and um, the whole coronavirus thing has changed my schedule. I'm teaching over the internet. Um, uh, yes. The week. I've been a rather um, complex time. You can, in the background, I have more monitors and another laptop so I can broadcast my classes. Um, but I, I wanted to share a couple of things. Um, I went to about, I have, I have about 100 students, mm -hmm. and they had an exercise this week in which they had to talk about or discuss what was the gift or what are the gifts of the coronavirus, which seems like a contradiction. And uh, they just uh, submitted into a very large discussion group for all my classes. And one of the things that many of them pointed out is that now they're discovering what they call a type of quietness, a stillness, um, because they're home, uh, they're not really going out. Um, and I would say a very large percentage discovered this, this, what they call this quietness, which is very nourishing. Yes. And, um, and I thought before, when you were talking about awakeness versus awakening, the awakeness that's always present, mm -hmm. and I thought maybe in a way, the gift that's coming out of this is a rediscovery of relationships, um, the interconnection with their families and friends that they're rediscovering but but discovering that quietness that maybe that's kind of pointing them back to that that awakeness that's always there it's the and, greatest opportunity that we'll have yeah in life and i think sure. that i think in a way uh what i've tried to do I, I gave them um a practice called walking the circle which is from Taoism, which is you look at all the seasons of life all the seasons are present in this moment you know winter and spring and fall and what comes out of each thing and uh and i think by them doing it they've discovered something that's always been there all along and now they have the opportunity to discover that that glimmer of awakeness yes absolutely it's the that's the funny thing is that when you start paying attention to attention attention starts paying attention to you yeah, right? yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and that's what they're and that that's what they're discovering is gee whiz it's this thing there's something they're discovering something but they don't know what neither do i yeah yeah right? yeah and and i think uh, i think the other valuable thing again is that um the the one difference that's always in your teaching is that instead of looking for a particular experience, the awakenings, which can be very exciting and powerful yeah, and right. whatever, yeah. and then you start reaching for it again and again, which puts yeah. you back into the character, but rather looking, uh, as I always tell them, it's looking at everything as this present, no matter what shows up. That's it. That's a, that's it's, a way Because that. you're telling them that because that's the truth, isn't it? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, even even the coronavirus, in a way, at a very deep level, is just the unfolding of awakeness in a in that particular way. I am the virus. I am the virus, and um, and it's showing up. You know, reality or whatever. All of us, it's awakeness showing up in a particular in its own way. And I think there's a serenity in that of just noticing. Hey, that's what's there. 
yeah, and it, it's the and noticing also we can just notice how what a thrilling time it is to be a virus, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's great. I mean, I'm growing like wildfire, man, all over the world in no time at all. It's just this is, I mean, it's a big, it's a big win for a coronavirus. And um and and I am that virus too. Yeah. So and go ahead. Well, I, I was just gonna say too, maybe in the moment I know that everybody a lot of people feel there's a, you know, we're in this terrible crisis and there's a lot of death and illness, but maybe over time, there's a, there'll be a looking back and saying, hey, what a gift. It gave us a gift of getting back to our families and friends and community and maybe discovering that, that quietness or that stillness that was always, that's always there and that's who we are. And so over the long term, it may be in some way a wonderful gift to have gone through this human beings cannot tell the difference between a blessing and a curse yeah and the and, and the reason is is that a blessing is that has the curse built in and yeah. the curse has the blessing built into it welcome to relativity so the, it is recognizing that if things are going my way, okay, but I wouldn't get too comfortable. That's great, I'm happy yeah. for you. I wouldn't get too comfortable. And if things are, are not going as, as the unit would decide or not going its way, then uh, I would tell the unit to just be patient because it, it will pass. But the funny thing is, is that I'm actually okay either way. Yeah. Right? Yep. Yeah, because I'm, and there's nothing but no, nothing but me, which is another way of saying there's nothing but you. Yeah. Well, one of the things I learned um, from somebody uh, who, who teaches acupuncture and written a couple of books, and she says that all of our squawks about life, our complaints about life, are really pointers to our promise to the world or our, our deepest mission. And if we look underneath it, everything, it's all of a reminder of who and what we really are all along. And so if we just look below the complaint and below the squawks about yeah. life, it's always telling us, it's, it's a reminder to look and see what we really are. Yeah. What we're, and what, what, what we're constantly doing is saying, well, <clears throat> as soon as I get this great pointer put to sleep, then I'm going to wake up. <laughs> <laughs> that's great thank you harvey it's wonderful you're very welcome you. yeah so neil hi fred hi there how are you hi hi everybody just just in relation to what uh harvey was saying there about uh how how people have taken this shared experience and put that particular gloss on it it, it just uh I, I was listening to a book this week um, on the Dead Sea Scrolls, funnily enough, and the professor who's delivering the course, mm -hmm. he said, uh, he was saying something that, to do with his job, but he says, uh, there's a maxim in what he does is that a text has no meaning apart from what the interpreter gives it. Oh, say that again, please. He, he says it's a maxim of, of what he does. He's a, he's a scholar of this uh, um, textual criticism. He interprets these texts. He says uh, as a maxim in his business that a text has no meaning apart from the meaning the interpreter gives it. Wow. There it is. That's beautiful. Yeah. So it's, you know, it's yeah. just, there's no meaning there. It's, no. it's yeah. You, you, you're you, establishing your own your own meaning, right? Yeah. And you're and you're you're establishing your own uh, like what what's what's the meaning of life? It's well, whatever you've assigned to it. Right. Right. There's not right. like there's a central thing here that that we're like there, there's not like there's some goalpost that we're all going to reach together or something. No. Not like that at all. And it's the uh, same thing as the, what's the purpose of your life? The purpose of your life right now, I can see very clearly 
and the person's purpose of both these lives is to have a conversation right now. Mm -hmm. It's just clear as a bell, isn't it? You just can't miss it. See, it's this obvious. It's this is it. And, uh, and, and what, is, what is the meaning? It's, well, for me, I have a story. It's just a story, but yeah. I have a story that this is an important teaching. Yeah. And um, that's my story and I'm sticking to it. <laughs> so as a result of it, <laughs> so as a result of that, then this has coming together has a lot of meaning for me. Yeah, it, right. it, 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 it is. It's very powerful. But it's all a scam. <laughs> it's a good story. It's, it's a good story, story and I, that's where yeah. I'm sticking to it, right? Yeah. 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 It is. It's the uh and I'm sticking to the uh so that the idea that it's my job as if there was someone really here, but it's my job as a whiteness to live through Fredness to the best of my ability. And I can only do that if I'm alert. Right. It's just because it'll be what arises if I'm alert. It's not like I'm doing something, it's all happening. But am I alert to it? That's the best, the best way that I can, that I can the, the, the do my best is to be alert to what I'm not doing. Yeah. Get that? Yeah. yeah. Great. Thank you very much. Anything else, Neil? No, that's it. Thanks, Brad. Okay. Thank you very much. So, um, open mic. Plenty of time. Mike? Mike Zerbel, I see you unmuted. Oh, no, 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 you're, you're muted. I see. No. Oh, here. somebody's waiting. Oh, Gavin Snedden is waiting to get in. Let me, uh, come on in, Gavin. Let me call on you right away. How are you? Gavin? Can you, can you hear? Uh, yeah, I see that you're here. Well, Gavin, we're we're glad that you got here. I'd be very, I'd very much like to talk to you, but it doesn't. Oh, hi! Can you hear me? Sorry. Oh yes, yes, okay. good. Sorry, uh, yeah, I had a little trouble uh, getting online there. That's all right. It's very good to see you. Yeah, it's uh, great to be here. Great to be here. How are you all doing? I've missed everything up till now, but I uh, hope you're all cool. Yeah, everything is everything is very good, and uh, now we talked about earlier that. You go into a little waiting room until we die. I mean, we don't. I don't know if that's that, that's apparently going to be temporary. And um, but it is. Uh, but that's what was happening. So I was trying to get you in the room. Okay, cool. So cool. what's going on in Gavin Land? Wow. Um. Yeah, things pretty much ticking over. Um. A lot going on like my I work for lo in local government in my day job yes and basically yeah we're doing a lot of stuff oh god you're part of you're you're doing the logistics of the yeah. city yeah. of London aren't you so yeah we're, we're part of <laughs> yeah essentially yeah, you're pretty busy <laughs> yeah <laughs> it's, you're highly entertained <laughs> There's a lot going on. Yeah. Yeah, there's a lot going on. And we're we're homeschooling as well. Uh, yes, oh guess that on top. Excellent. Uh, so yeah, it's um yeah, it's busy. it's busy. So that's Gavin's world. How about you? How are you doing? Well, I'm here, same as always. <laughs> Not much to say about that. No. Mm -mm. You're doing well as always. I think I'm doing okay. Yeah, not sure uh, 
Did, well, you, not, it's, did you not be okay? Right, that, that's exactly what I was going to say. Yeah, I'm no. not sure how you could not be okay. Yeah. <laughs> Me either. It's just a it's just a nicety that I ask myself. Right, <laughs> sort of just breaks the ice with myself. <laughs> Amen. And I'm always interested in finding out what's happening in relativity for somebody because that's going to tell me where they are on the clarity chart, right? Because if you if you and and you and everybody is welcome and 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 at the perfect place, regardless of where you fall on the clarity in chart in a in a given day, you can't be in the wrong place on it. But when, when we, wherever we are, we just want to be very conscious of that because otherwise you'll be like um, uh, clients that I sometimes get where I have to just break down and tell them the, the terrible truth, which is, you know, I can't get you somewhere you think you already are. <laughs> <laughs> Right, so confess. Let's confess to ourselves how we really doing. Yeah, yeah. It comes and goes. Yeah, uh, yeah. but uh, you know, I don't care about that. Um, Gavin does sometimes, but mm -hmm. not all that much, actually. Yeah. <laughs> not all that much. <coughs> I've been noticing that same thing. I'm noticing it worldwide. I keep, I keep searching out. For suffering and I just don't find much of it in my group right my people so to speak I just don't just don't find much mm. I don't want to say I don't find any mm. but I, I, I don't find any wherever a whiteness is not in where if a whiteness is not in denial then there's no no then there's no suffering yeah. well, it, is, it is what it is it is what it is right and this is it you mean this, this is it, don't you? As opposed to? As opposed to nothing. There's nothing to oppose it to. <laughs> there we go. Yeah, we could make up another this. <laughs> And we could uh, we can make it terrible, and we could believe it, and we could suffer from it. Do you want to do that? I don't. I'm so sick of it. Well, you know, the making up another this is. I was going to say, well, that that bit's part of the plan, as if as if there's a bit that's not <laughs> not part of the plan. But um, yeah, the, the suffering's a byproduct, you know. Of, of, you know, it comes back to our counterfactuals that we were talking about. You know, being able to. Uh, Imagine something that isn't is yes. uh, a, a useful little trick that these units have mastered, and my goodness me, it, it allows them to do all kinds of stuff that uh, some of the uh, some of the creatures that can't imagine things being other than they are, and um, they just can't do that stuff. But yeah, the side effect is then uh, somehow you get from that to thinking, not only I can imagine it not being like this, but how I wish it wasn't like this. Yeah, right. Uh, not oh, that. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> yeah. Untold suffering there. Then we're then we're really on the road on the roller coaster. Yeah, yeah. So it it's there's um something similar to this. There are people that have been in coronavirus denial. And America is just so full of yeah. rebellious fools. And not all rebels are fools by any means, but we do have our share. <laughs> and there's a term, I can't remember it now, but it's the Kruger or something. That vague viewings of Bill, but yeah, I'm not sure either. So what, and what it is, it's the, it's when you're, you're so ignorant. Yeah, that's it. Dunning, yeah, Kruger, Dunning, Dunning, Kruger. Yeah. Kruger, when, Dunning. When you're, so, yeah. when you're so dumb, you don't or realize that Dunning, you are because you think you're real smart. Yes, right. That you you completely overrate your intelligence when the truth is the reason you're doing that is that you're so is you're you're ignorant to what you don't know, and yeah. really if that's the 
that's the place of seekers with enlightenment too. Well, sure. I mean, you basically made made your whole living <laughs> exploiting that effect, Frank. <laughs> you would never put to be in if it wasn't for that effect. Yeah, and I got it. It's it's, it's going on, <laughs> right? This is what's going on. It's <laughs> well, you know, I'm living in a scam. I gotta have a scam, right? I gotta have a scam to to, to live in one. <laughs> well, who was it that wrote me this morning that was, said, "Oh, I know who it was. It was Lior." that Lior sent his CSP fee and he said, I'm so happy to be able to buy some more of this water by the river. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, someone's just uh, referencing that in the chat. Yeah. 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 Exactly. Yeah. Precisely. Exactly. Anything else? No, I think that's good for me, matey. It's, uh, mm. yeah. Oh, great great to, uh, great to touch base with you all. Uh, let's see. I might call on somebody. Just make just, so get nervous for a minute. See who I'm going to call. I'm going to call somebody. The uh, Cliff. There we go. You got everybody off the hook. How are you? And it it was something I was thinking about saying talking about and I let it go, but then it came back and I said, well, we have some time. You, you mentioned the quality scale. The clarity scale. Yes, I'm sorry, the clarity scale. Right. And that's something that's kind of been on my mind. It kind of keeps popping up. I don't know what a clarity scale is, but the way that it, it's been popping up for me is uh, I, I feel a, uh, in my body lately uh, a, a, a sense of excitement. It's kind of just the energy that's there. But it's kind of, in a way, created a shift that's, that's, that I think other people are feeling that is unexpected. And that is, in terms of what I'll describe as clarity, has become this uh, kind <coughs> of shifted into like a, a, a dark pond on a moonless night. It's very still and it's inky. And there's not very much detail. It's got its own beauty to it and its own mysterious qualities that's very beautiful, but it's much different than the clarity that I was experiencing. I'm just using the word. I don't know if I'm using it correctly. Mm -hmm. There was this bright sunlight and everything sparkled in this, you know, infinite detail yeah. of, of beauty. and. Yeah, that's not detail. clarity. That's a spiritual yeah. experience. Well. Uh, Okay, <laughs> I'll it, argue it, with you the, on that. The, spir but, the spiritual experiences accompanies the clarity. The, the, the sharpness, the newness, the oh my godness, I'm, I'm everything and all of this, right. and blah, 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 blah. That is spiritual experience that accompanies the clarity and it's that spiritual experience that everybody gets so addicted to. Yeah. So, Just like so, I did. Yeah, <laughs> and, and so what I'm feeling now is is a a sense of peace and well-being in this stillness, but there's a hint of, uh, of a feeling of, of loss strange to me, and I don't know where to place it or what to do about it. But You're losing Cliff, I can tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> and there, uh, can be, there can be a rising of grief, grieving even over the loss of the character. I don't think it's the character of, of Cliff. I mean, I'll, I'll be delighted to talk about, about that. But it's that, I, I think it's that, that loss of that, you call it a spiritual experience, I call it clarity. Uh, because it was all, only because it was ongoing for so many months at a time that it kind of felt normal. Yeah. And now this is, a, this is kind of like the, the, the new normal. Um, you know, the thing with the, with the cliff, I mean, I'm not done with that, but, but you know, while you mentioned the cliff, there is, a, there is a feeling of contraction in the body that I haven't <laughs> felt in a while. Uh, I think particularly due to this uh, coronavirus, mm -hmm. you know, and I think it, it's, it's normal. And it is a feeling of selfness in there. 
and I don't have a problem with it because I do get that it is just feeling and that there is nobody there that's feeling it. Right. It's just an arising of a feeling and, a, right. and and I don't think it's unnormal and it's not bothersome. Uh, it's just interesting to observe it. Yes. Uh, yeah. And into, I don't know if it's intellectually or I just know it deeply that there isn't anybody there to feel it. I mean, to, that it's a feeling, but the, yeah, it's a feeling, but there's nobody there to feel it. But it's it, just a yes, it's a but it's it's a feeling that you have had. That, that go move beyond that in in yeah. the sense that, that so, so who was it that was talking about that the make that we oh Robin that we under we use intellectual understanding to get us to the place where the intellectual understanding is superfluous, and I think yeah. that's what you were moving around there because yeah. you know it i know by the way just for the new people um cliff is somebody that woke up in satsang a couple of years ago right uh not a couple that maybe a year ago about a year ago okay okay good well, it's nice to see that that it's nice to see you home yeah I, i'm all of you you know I, i'm I may not be at the satsang, but I'm watching the videos and I'm, I'm constantly enmeshed in, you know, my own way. And as you know, Fred, I, I now have time to be more in the, yeah, yeah. As, yeah. As the satsang. yeah right. <laughs> Seeing more of my face. Anyway. It's a welcome gift. It's a welcome gift of, of, of it, isn't it? I mean, yeah. Gratitude just is overflowing. For That's it. And it's not even specific. Yeah, yeah. Just gratitude because it's there. I, I just, you know, it was kind of mentioning it's kind of just kind of an observation for the way things are today. And uh, mm -hmm. so there's the the clarity scale. What um, when I when I talk about the clarity scale, that would be the same thing as as, as if I said the alertness scale, because the the it's the sharpness of you know who you are right now or you don't. And when you know who you are right now, then the ramifications of that show fairly clearly, show up fairly clearly. And if, in, if, you, if you don't, those ramifications will show up as well. So it the, the and and our because ultimately everything is going to stem from our view, and am I viewing this experiencing as a cliff or through that body? And if I'm if if I think that if I think that the screen starts right here. I'm in the dream. If I recognize that the screen is, that, that, that the camera and lens is back here and that this is also part of the dream, then I'm gonna be seeing things completely differently. And, and, and when I change where I'm looking from, what I'm looking at changes. That's the one thing that it seems to me that there, that there is a sense of choice around that, but I don't know who it would be or any of that, it goes against all logic. But I just say there's a sense that there's a choice that we can make <clears throat> as to whether we're gonna look, as to what eyes we're gonna look through. We're gonna look through Cliff's eyes or Awakeness's eyes. And Awakeness's eyes, no problem. Cliff's eyes, oh God. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. One other thing, Fred. So, yeah. Something else that was said today, and, and uh, maybe we could even talk about it at, at you know, what, perhaps at, at another time. Mm -hmm. But uh, so, someone said, uh, "Waking up to the dream, or waking up from the dream." Mm -hmm. And I went, "Oh, that's really great." And then I was thinking about it, <laughs> and I'm going, "Yeah, what what exactly is that? Is that saying? Uh, there's a lot more to it. Than I think that I." Uh, there's a lot to that. Yes, um, yeah. There is a lot to that. And it would be interesting to have some uh, some thoughts on it at some time. Okay. Just, just recall it and, and bring it up. Just so you know, <clears throat> there's very little to talk about on that topic. <laughs> I 
because we can only speak from the dream. <laughs> Thank you, everybody. It's been a it's been a lovely meeting. Yeah. So thanks for all of you being here. That's you know, I love all you guys. We thank you so much for being part of our family. And I'll see some of you this week and hopefully I'll see all of you either Wednesday or Sunday. I'll stay with you as long as the dogs allow. <laughs> we'll close with a little meditation. <laughs>